aha, how I got into fitness. Yeah. So how I started was, um, I think it's not very different from how other people are, tr- are starting right now, the, the young trainers that you're, uh, you see at the gyms. Um, it starts with uh, you putting in work for yourself mm-hmm. without an idea of where that's going to lead. Yeah. Probably you feel like it's for personal care. Yeah. But then um, I remember being interested uh, by the science in it and what goes into the muscles and how it works for, to grow it because uh, uh, you could also, I could only define fitness from, my, from the highest of the understanding I had at that time. Yeah. So I remember being um, an online subscriber of Men's Health because they won't ship here. Mm-hmm. So I got a copy of Men's Health for four years uh, into my email. Okay. And um, I would read about uh, eating and exercise just for me to use at the gym, not to help others. Yeah. But um, things started becoming a bit interesting when I would be, because I'm interested, the whole thing uh, with becoming a a trainer, you have to have the passion. Mm -hmm. And mainly the passion uh, uh, to help others. Yes. So then um, I started sort of being interested in how other people train. If there is something I, if there are like cues I could give on a squat or on a deadlift or on any lift, mm-hmm. I could like, uh, hey, uh, I think if you corrected this and then do this, uh, your lift will be better and then therefore the benefits will be mm-hmm. optimal. And people loved that, loved uh, free coaching, free advice, free yeah. uh, from somebody who sounded like they know what they are talking about. Okay. And, and, and to be honest, that didn't come from any schooling, any, so it came from searching on the internet hours of, 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 of that, just wanting to be better and, and at it myself. Yeah. To a uh, point, um, I think it got, um, I was training at the stadium, I remember, where two women um, sort of, I would like uh, correct what they were doing, they liked it, and then they asked me like, are you coming tomorrow? Yeah, then I'll be like, yes, I'm coming tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So I started aligning my training hours with their training hours, Yeah, uh, because they liked my help. Yes. And then, uh, um, that's 2010, mm-hmm. they uh, started sort of tipping me, or I don't know how they called it, but it was like some form of motivation. Yeah. Like after a session, they would like give me 5,000. Mm-hmm. So, for somebody who goes to school, who has like uh, a small bursary to, to live, uh, 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 that was like an extra kind of, uh, it was a motivation, I would say, yeah. for somebody who didn't have money. Mm-hmm. So then um, it started being a serious thing where I'm like, oh, when are you coming tomorrow? Or when then, because there was now like an extra motivation yeah. for me to do, I would even step on and then ask them when they will come. So then, um, yeah, I remember doing all kinds of things for free to learn, to, to learn how to communicate to people. Yeah. And um, uh, later on, I loved it enough to sort of uh, invest into education. And then I went on to get a degree, I mean, to get a certificate. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, I think the confidence came when I felt like now that I'm a certified fitness trainer, I can call my first person a client because at that time I never really, before then I never really, I could not take you, train you and then feel like I had a client. Yeah. Although you could like give me 5,000 or, or I don't know how much for transport or whatever as a young uh, uh, trainer. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but um, I remember, yeah, feeling confident that now I have a client. So, mm. and I remember my first clients by name, by <laughs> everything. Yeah, yeah. And also so, special people. Yeah.